Zanj, Arabic, Zanj meaning blacks, was a name used by medieval Muslim geographers to refer to both a certain portion of Southeast Africa, primarily the Swahili coast, and to the area's Bantu inhabitants. This word is also the origin of the place named Zanzibar, coast of the black people, and the Sea of Zanj. Zangi Zingi is derived from the word rust. However, the appellation in Persian is roughly equivalent with Negro. It is recorded in Arabic as Zanji, Zanji, and in Turkish as Zensi. The Latinization Zinjium serves as an archaic name for the coastal area in modern Kenya and Tanzania in southern East Africa. The architecture of these commercial urban settlements are now a subject of study for urban planning. For centuries the coastal settlements were a source of ivory, gold, and slaves, from sections of the conquered hinterland, to the Indian Ocean world. <laughs> <laughs> Division of Africa's coast Geographers historically divided the eastern coast of Africa at large into several regions based on each region's respective inhabitants. Arab and Chinese sources referred to the general area that was located to the south of Al-Misr Egypt, Al-Habasha Abyssinia and Barbara Somalia as Zanj, Zanj meaning the country of the blacks. Also transliterated as Zenj or Zinj, was situated in the southeast Africa vicinity and was inhabited by Bantu-speaking peoples called the Zanj. The core area of Zanj occupation stretched from the territory south of present-day Ras Kamboni to Pemba Island in Tanzania. South of Pemba lay Safala in modern Mozambique, the northern boundary of which may have been Pingani. Beyond Safala was the obscure realm of Waqwaq, also in Mozambique. The 10th century Arab historian and geographer Abu al Hassan Ali al Masudi describes Safala as the furthest limit of Zanj settlement, and mentions its king's title as Mf Alma, a Bantu word. <laughs> <laughs> Zanj territory History The Zanj traded with Arabs, Persians and Indians, but according to some sources, only locally, since they possessed no ocean-going ships. According to other sources, the heavily Bantu Swahili peoples already had seafaring vessels with sailors and merchants trading with Arabia and Persia, and as far east as India and China. Through this fusion, some Arabs intermarried with local Bantu women, which eventually gave rise to the Swahili culture and language—both of which are Bantu in origin, but significantly influenced by foreign elements e.g. clothing, loan words, etc. Prominent settlements of the Zanj coast included Malindi, Gedi, and Mombasa. By the late medieval period, the area included at least 37 substantial Swahili trading towns, many of them quite wealthy. However, these communities never consolidated into a single political entity the Zanj Empire being a late 19th century fiction. The urban ruling and commercial classes of these Swahili settlements were made up of Arab and Persian immigrants. The Bantu peoples inhabited the coastal regions, and were organized only as family groups. The term Shenzi, used on the East African coast and derived from the Swahili word Zanji, referred in a derogatory way to anything associated with rural blacks. An example of this would be the colonial term Shenzi dog, referring to a native dog. The name of a well-known dog breed, Basenji, means of the blacks. The Zanj were for centuries shipped as slaves by Arab traders to all the countries bordering the Indian Ocean. The Umayyad and Abbasid caliphs recruited many Zanj slaves as soldiers and, as early as 696 AD, we learn of slave revolts of the Zanj against their Arab masters in Iraq see below. 
Ancient Chinese texts also mention ambassadors from Java presenting the Chinese emperor with two Sengqi slaves as gifts, and Sengqi slaves reaching China from the Hindu kingdom of Srivijaya in Java. The sea off the southeastern coast of Africa was known as the Sea of Zanj, and included the Mascarene Islands and Madagascar. During the anti-apartheid struggle it was proposed that South Africa should assume the name Azania, to reflect ancient Zanj. Topic: Contemporary descriptions. Arab descriptions of the Zanj peoples have been inconsistent. A negative view is exemplified in the following passage from Kitab al-Bad wa Tariq by the medieval Arab writer Al-Mughadasi. As for the Zanj, they are people of black color, flat noses, kinky hair, and little understanding or intelligence. In 1331, the Arabic-speaking Berber explorer Ibn Battuta visited the Kilwa Sultanate in the Zanj, which was ruled by Sultan Hassan bin Sulayman's Yemeni dynasty. Battuta described the kingdom's Arab ruler as often making slave and booty raids on the local Zanj inhabitants, the latter of whom Battuta characterized as, "...jet black in color, and with tattoo marks on their faces." Kilwa is one of the most beautiful and well-constructed towns in the world. The whole of it is elegantly built. The roofs are built with mangrove pole. There is very much rain. The people are engaged in a holy war, for their country lies beside the pagan Zanj. Their chief qualities are devotion and piety, they follow the Shafi'i sect. When I arrived, the Sultan was Abu al Muzaffa Hassan, surnamed Abu al Mawahib, loosely translated, the giver of gifts, on account of his numerous charitable gifts. He frequently makes raids into the Zanj country, neighboring mainland, attacks them, and carries off booty, of which he reserves a fifth, using it in the manner prescribed by the Quran. Quran. Zanj Rebellion The Zanj Rebellion was a series of uprisings that took place between 869 and 883 AD near the city of Basra also known as Basara, situated in present-day Iraq. The Zanj who were taken as slaves to the Middle East were often used in strenuous agricultural work. In particular, Zanj slaves were used in labor-intensive plantations, harvesting crops such as sugarcane in the lower Mesopotamia basin of what is now southern Iraq. Harsh circumstances apparently provoked three rebellions between the 7th and 9th centuries. What is now called the Zanj Rebellion was the largest of these. <laughs> 